4.1. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to graph a new type of function, a quadratic function. You should remember those from Algebra 1. They're the ones that look like this. Another word for this is a parabola. What we see here is the parent function for parabolas, y equals x squared. This point at the bottom is called a vertex. If a parabola were facing the other direction, the top would be the vertex. The line that goes down the middle of a parabola is called an axis of symmetry. You see that word defined here as well. And an axis of symmetry always cuts a parabola or a quadratic in half. One more thing worth mentioning. If in a quadratic b is equal to 0, in this formula, ax squared plus bx plus c. If b equals 0, the axis of symmetry is always x equals 0. We're going to look at that first, and later on we'll see what happens when b does not equal 0. Because there is no b term, again, b is the number next to x, not x squared, the axis of symmetry is going to be at x equals 0. So like most graphs, we're going to start by making a table. And for parabolas, I recommend starting at the axis of symmetry and choosing a couple of numbers smaller and a couple of numbers bigger. To fit on the y chart, you just plug in these numbers into y equals 2x squared. Once we've got all these points, we can plot them and draw a curve. I recommend trying this on your own before you just look at my graph. Once you've got your points plotted, you should be able to draw that parabola-type shape. Remember, it's got a curve at the bottom, not a sharp point. If we saw a sharp point down there, that would be more like an absolute value graph. One other thing worth noticing, if we look at our axis of symmetry at x equals 0, both sides of the axis of symmetry look the same. It's like a reflection. That will always happen if you draw a line straight down the axis of symmetry. One more reminder, axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex. Looking at example 2, b is still equal to 0 because there's no x term. There's only an x squared and a constant. So we're going to take a look at this graph. Because there's no b, there's no linear term, we're going to say the axis of symmetry is at 0 again. And we should choose a couple numbers smaller and a couple of numbers bigger. Go ahead and make sure you can get the numbers for this chart. Check them with my numbers. Once you've got your table filled in, we can go ahead and plot the points, and hopefully we'll see the shape. Once you've got those points plotted, you can draw your parabola shape. Remember to keep it curvy at the vertex. And we see this one opens upside down. The reason you'll know that's right is if you look back at the original problem, that minus sign says we're going to flip this upside down. It's going to be a reflection across the x-axis. Comparing this to the graph of y equals x squared, if we were going to write down a sentence for this, which is something I might very well expect you to do, you'd say that this graph reflected across the x-axis. It moved up 3, and it's wider. We know it's wider because any number less than 1 here is going to make this wider. Any number bigger than 1 is going to make it narrower, just like we saw with other types of graphs, specifically absolute value graphs. At this point, you can go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do these later. Our next key concept, we're going to see how to graph a parabola when b does not equal 0. Notice in these pictures, what that does is it moves the vertex, which moves the axis of symmetry. There's a formula right here, x equals negative b over 2a. That's how you find the vertex. Notice on the last couple of examples, b was 0, so that makes that whole formula be x equals 0. The rest of this lesson, we'll find out when b, what happens when b is not 0. Let's graph this 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. We start by figuring out what is the axis of symmetry. Go ahead and try this on your own, see if you get the same thing. I 
I get two, that tells me that my axis of symmetry is at x equals two. Now when I make my table, first number I'll start with is two instead of zero. I'll choose a couple numbers smaller than that and a couple numbers bigger. At this point, it's very similar to the other problems. I just figure out what numbers to put in my table, plot the points, and draw my curve. Try that on your own. Always keep in mind in the back of your head that a parabola has that axis of symmetry that you can always look at and make sure that the points on both sides are a reflection. We see this one opens up and is steeper than y equals x squared. That's all told to us by that leading coefficient. Because it's positive, we open up. Because it's bigger than 1, it's steeper. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do them later. So I've already talked a little bit about minimum and maximum, I believe, at the beginning of the video. Maybe I didn't say the words. But a minimum or a maximum is always the vertex. If the, verte if the parabola is right side up, that's a minimum on the vertex. And if the parabola is upside down, we've got a maximum. And that minimum or maximum value is always the y value. As we can see right here, it's the y coordinate. It tells us how high or how low that maximum or minimum is. So this problem says to tell whether the function has a maximum or a minimum. And then we have to find that maximum or minimum. What we're going to do to figure that out is look at the leading coefficient. Because this is positive, we need to know that that means this opens up. Which means we'll have a minimum. Minimum or maximum, whether it's one or the other, it always happens at the vertex. So as long as we can figure out the y value of the vertex, we're done now. To figure out that y value, we have to use our formula for finding the x value first, and then we simply plug in that x value and figure out the y value. So go ahead and try that, see if you come up with the same thing as me. And we get a minimum of y equals negative 7. Notice I don't care about what the x value is if I'm just asking for the maximum or minimum. Go ahead and pause the video, read this over, and see if you can s figure out how to set this up. I'll be honest, this is kind of one of the harder word problems that we'll see. Looking at the problem, it looks like we have a couple of possibilities for variables. We might have something that represents the price reduction. Call that x. And depending on the price reduction, that's going to change our revenue. So we might have something else for revenue, maybe call that R. Setting up this first equation that I'm going to write isn't too bad. I notice that we've got a total revenue in one scenario is $35 per person that's racing and 380 racers per week. That's how much this guy is making right now at his race car, go-kart track. Setting up this next equation is the hard part. We know that we're going to lower the price by $1. So instead of $35, maybe not $1, but some amount of dollars. That's called our price reduction. 35 minus 6. If we're lowering it by $2, we would say 35 minus 2, $33. Our revenue, every time we lower by 1, our 380 goes up by 20. So we want to maximize this value. And that's kind of difficult. we got to multiply this out and then find the maximum. Hopefully this is an upside down parabola, otherwise we wouldn't have a maximum. But we'll see that we do. The next step that you should try on your own is to multiply this out, use the distributed property, FOIL, whatever you like. After we do that, we see that we have a revenue equation that has a negative leading coefficient. So this is an upside down parabola. And the maximum would be right there at the vertex. Just like the last example, we're going to find the vertex by first finding the axis of symmetry using the negative b over 2a formula, which you should try on your own. And once you do that, it's not going to be a y. We're going to plug that in. 
up to the revenue, and you'll get your maximum revenue. So try that on your own, see if you can get the same numbers that I get. And that's it. Notice that this maximum is more money than he made by charging $35. If this maximum would have been less than that, we would have done something wrong because obviously it wouldn't have been the maximum revenue. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do that later. Other than that, we are done with this lesson.